welcome to another FPL video. Now, before I do all of the usual, you know, review of Game Week 13 and a preview of Game Week 14, it's very important to talk about Game Week 18 and 19. And during my last live stream, it was announced that the blank Game Week will happen in Game Week 18 and a double Game Week will be formed in Game Week 19. So it's very important to prepare for those. But I have to stress, it's really important not to tear apart your team and completely change the structure just because you want to fit in as many double game week players as possible and you know you're just thinking of game week 18 so much as well you want to be also focusing on game weeks 14 to 17 and uh, that's what i'm trying to uh, convey in this video it's very very important that you also focus on every single week and take it as it comes along just like a manager does in real life with their team so do not you know completely tear up your own team structure it's very very important you do that but of course try to get some of these double gaming players and i will be talking about my own strategy at the moment but of course it's subject to change and if you don't have you know these chips like free hit and wild card and stuff like that although we do get a new one in game week 16 you know of course it's going to be more difficult to navigate but uh you know try not to just think oh i need to use all of my chips or i need to make so many transfers and completely change my team take hits I would definitely uh, not say that. So what you see on screen are the fixtures for game week 18, which is going to be the blank game week. So Sheffield are going to play Newcastle. And to be honest, if we're looking at that fixture, let's say you're on a free hit. Uh, if I'm being honest, maybe target a Newcastle defender or their keeper Darlow. And I would say Callum Wilson. Apart from that, at least at the moment, I'm not really too keen on any of the other players from Newcastle and from Sheffield, even less so, I think... Uh, I mean, you never know, they could turn up in this game and beat Newcastle, but I don't know, I just Sheffield are just completely poor this season and I'm staying away from their assets, but you never know. And then when you look at Wolves against Everton, of course, the likes of Dominic Calvert-Lewin looks really good, but even Pedro Neto maybe around his price, around 5.7 million, maybe a very good choice. Um, but there's definitely some options uh, between both teams. And to be honest, that's a really hard game to call. Both of them are fairly inconsistent. You know, they both beat Chelsea recently and no one expected that. Um, but then again, you know, they could sometimes get thrashed on their day or just not turn up. So they're very difficult teams to predict. Then you have Man City against Brighton. And to be honest, you want to be targeting those Man City players. Uh, maybe the likes of Diaz, uh, Cancelo, if you think he's going to start, uh, Kevin De Bruyne, etc., um, but yeah, it's a bit of a tough one. Then you look at Aston Villa Spurs, maybe Martinez, Grealish. Apart from that, though, you would back Spurs to win. So the likes of Kane and Son, you know, they're just going to keep on uh, being very good assets. And then Arsenal Palace, that's a tough one. I mean, it depends what Arsenal turns up. Uh, but Zaha is the standout, in my opinion, from both of those teams. Uh, because maybe I wouldn't expect either of them to keep a clean sheet. Uh, but I would expect Zaha to be one of the best players on the pitch. Um, but you never know, things can change. But those are the fixtures for game week 18. And now for game week 19, these are all the fixtures. And of course, you can see some teams who obviously have two game weeks. And these are the teams with two game weeks. So West Ham, they're going to have Burnley at home and West Brom at home. So that's really, really good fixtures. And that's why a lot of you are, you know, talking about getting free West Ham players in. And that's fair enough. And if Mikel Antonio is fit, having him and maybe Bowen uh, or Fornals and then one of West Ham's defenders, uh, you know, that looks really good. So anyone who has Kufal or Creswell, I would suggest holding them and try to look elsewhere with transfers. That doesn't mean to say they're amazing players and they're going to get you a lot of points. Um, but, you know, with this double game week, West Ham players could be very, very good. And then you look at West Bromwich Albion, they've got Wolves away and West Ham away. Uh, Sam Allardyce is going to come in to replace Slavon Bilic. And I have to say, that news came after the Man City result where they got a draw at the Etihad. And that's just football nowadays. Uh, managers don't get time to really, you know, get the results they want. But they were only two points off the drop zone. Uh, and if you look at it, let's be real, most of West Brom's players, apart from maybe Pereira and Johnston, are bang average. So I think Bilic did an amazing job getting them promoted in his first full season. And... He was doing all right. I mean, he just got a draw against City, but that decision was taken beforehand and he's gone. We'll have to wait and see how West Brom do. So it's a bit early to say, but at the moment, I wouldn't go near West Brom players. Uh, and then you've got Leicester. They've got two game weeks in this uh, game week 19 and they've got Southampton and Chelsea at home. So pretty tough fixtures. And let's be real, Leicester, they've been very, very inconsistent. They just lost Ev to Everton 2-0. And like I said, apart from the Brighton game where they won 3-0, 
They're very, very inconsistent, very, very shaky at home. And that's why Brendan Rodgers sometimes goes to five at the back. And then you look at Chelsea, they've got Fulham away and then Leicester away. So there could be some points for Chelsea players, the likes of Ziyech if he's uh, back. I think he should be. Uh, maybe Werner if you lot um, are interested in him. And then obviously Chilwell, Reese James, Kurt Zuma. Apart from that, I wouldn't recommend too many. There could be Mason Mount. I know a lot of you have been thinking about getting him in. Um, and then, yeah, Mendy, the keeper, of course. But some very interesting players you can get from there. Uh, and then Leeds, Brighton and Southampton at home. And to be honest, even if Leeds lose both of those games, which I don't, I, I can't even speak, which I doubt, I think Bamford is a fantastic option. So if you have him, I would definitely keep him anyway, regardless of these double game weeks coming up and all of that. And in terms of more uh, lineups, of course, Southampton, they've got Leicester away and Leeds away. And the likes of Danny Ings, Che Adams, uh, Walker Peters, Vestergaard, even Bednarek, uh, Ward Prowse, for those of you who like him, McCarthy, I think they're the standouts. Then you've got Fulham, they've got Chelsea at home, Man United at home, and some of you have been looking at Lookman or Cavalero. There's a, quite a few players there, but for me personally, I wouldn't see it and I wouldn't go for it. But of course, it's two game weeks, so you, you, know, you never know. Uh, Man United, they've got Liverpool away, which is really tough, and then Fulham away, which is a good fixture. But then again, Man United have a great away record, but Liverpool are formidable at home. They've never lost. They've won every single game at Anfield this season and they haven't lost in three years. Uh, but Man United against Fulham away, that's a great fixture for them. Then you look at Liverpool, of course, Man United at home and Burnley at home. So great fixtures for Liverpool, the likes of Salah, even Mane if he comes good. Um, so yeah, and you could go for a Liverpool defender like Robertson. Then you have Burnley. They're the last team. They've got West Ham away and Liverpool away. So those are all the teams with double game weeks in game week 19. And of course, the Blank game week uh, for, obviously, game week 18. Now, if you're asking me in terms of my strategy at the moment, before I move on to my game week 13 review, at the moment, I am considering using my free hit for game week 18 because, of course, as we establish here, there's only five fixtures. And if I look across the board, well, technically six fixtures, actually, um, I'm not really too keen on it because, of course, I just got rid of Callum Wilson and this was before the news broke out. And of course, he'd be great for this game week. So I don't have anyone covered from Newcastle or Sheffield. Then I look at Wolves-Everton. I've only got Calvert-Lewin and Kilman doesn't even play. So it's basically one player. Man City-Brighton. I mean, technically, I did have Diaz and I'll obviously be talking about him very soon. Um, but uh, don't have him anymore. Brighton, I've got no one except for Basuma and I don't want to play him. Then you look at Aston Villa. Yeah, I've got Martinez and Grealish. So not too bad. And uh, from Spurs, of course, I've got Kane and Son. So there you go. I've got five players overall so far. Um, so that's not too bad. But then Arsenal Palace, I've got no one from Arsenal, and for good reason, and no one from Palace. So I literally have five players for this game week. And I think it's very important to try field as many players as possible. And that's why a free hit for game week 18 is looking very, very uh, good. In terms of triple captaincy and stuff, I don't think... Um, I mean, at the moment anyway, I'm not thinking about it for... But maybe for game week 19, I could use it. Uh, maybe the likes of Liverpool, you know, two home games, Man United and Burnley could put it on Salah triple captaincy, but I'm not too sure at the moment. I don't think I would be doing that. Um, so at the moment, I'm probably going to steer clear of the triple captaincy, although I'm not saying, you know, I'm definitely ruling it out. I'm not saying that. Uh, but at the moment, free hit for game week 18. In terms of the bench boost and stuff like that, I'm probably going to use in conjunction with the wild card, the second wild card, and that will be much later on in the season because think about it, there's still other competitions like the FA Cup, the Champions League, and there's going to be more double game weeks, blank game weeks to come. So it's very important to not just use all of your chips already because when the time comes and you're a bit, you know, unprepared for future double game weeks and stuff like that, you might regret, you know, using it in the first place. Um, but of course, you know, I'm not ruling anything out. But at the moment, I think I'm going to be saving all of my chips except for the free hit, which I could use in game week 18. But enough of all of that. Let's look at my team and how it did for game week 13. And you know what? One major mistake I made, and it was the first thing pretty much that I saw because it was the first two games uh, of the game week. And that was transferring out Chilwell for Diaz. And that's literally a, a difference of five points there. And Chihuahua got the assist and he looked so threatening. You know, it was back to him bombing forward, being in the box. And he got a great assist for Giroud. And I have to say, I was very uncomfortable watching him. And I had him for four or five game weeks and he didn't get a single assist or goal. Uh, but as soon as I transferred him out, he did. And the guy I replaced him with, Ruben Diaz, scores an own goal against West Bromwich Albion. And it was very unfortunate, to be honest. 
And this doesn't mean that he's a bad asset at all, by the way. But uh, I have to say that own goal did kind of open my eyes into, you know, the difference between him and Chilwell, despite me already having a Chelsea defender. So it's a really interesting one. And I will be talking about Game Week 14 and the transfer I did make. And uh, it's very knee-jerk, I, I will admit. But uh, I uh, did put a lot of thought into it. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. But Ruben Diaz, very disappointing. And that was, uh, you know, a very big low. And then, of course, I had Zuma, who hit the post, or the crossbar, should I say, against Wolves. And very unlucky not to score on another day that goes in. And uh, maybe he's the one producing and Chilwell doesn't. So a bit of bad luck there because... Um, the plan was to get rid of one of these Chelsea defenders to Diaz. I ended up getting rid of Chilwell and uh, I had a bit more value tied into Zuma and that also played a part into my thinking. But there you go. I mean, very unfortunate. Zuma is still a great asset and there's going to be something very important about Chilwell and Zuma that I'm going to discuss. And it's something that I tweeted um, if you check me out on, on uh, Twitter, Dylan RCM. And uh, yeah, uh, very unfortunate with Zuma. Kufal. Very, very happy with him. And a lot of people were telling me to start Kawaka Peters because Arsenal are poor. And of course, Arsenal was still poor yesterday. But Kufal got the assist. And to be honest, that was an amazing goal by Haller. And uh, yeah, Kufal got bonus points, free bonus points. And even before um, first 10, 20 minutes, he was already on free bonus points. And the game was nil-nil. So it showed that he was having a really good game overall. And uh, yeah, you know what? Kufal looks pretty good to be honest and uh, this was his first return because I got him in around game week 10 I believe but very happy with Kufal and hopefully he pushes on here and then I look at my midfield and uh, of course Bruno still has to play and Grealish of course and hopefully they do really well but Salah and Son both producing yet again and Salah the goal was deflected and he was on for bonus at one point but Firmino's winner changed things but yeah Salah very very good and uh, he's just so consistent. And this is what I said. A lot of people were saying, why don't you get rid of him for KDB? And I was considering it for a minus four anyway. But then I thought about it and said, you know what, Salah, I would want to get him back anyway. And getting him out ahead of a home fixture, no matter if it's Tottenham or whoever, is not advisable. So I stuck with him. And another good decision on my part, um, same with obviously playing Kufa over Kyle Walker-Peters. Of course, if I look at my bench, you know, in hindsight, I could have put Walker-Peters over Diaz or Zuma. But really, I didn't expect Chelsea to concede two or C to concede a known goal by the player I bring in. So a bit of misfortune there. But Hyun Ming Son, I have to say, very debatable how that goal stood. But it did. And he got bonus points. And this guy just keeps on doing the business. And yeah, him and Kane, you know, at least one of them is involved pretty much every single game week. And there you go. Son was the one. Um, he's just so clinical this season. And uh, his conversion rate is absolutely insane. And he's got Leicester at home. And then Wolves away. So some good fixtures coming up after that. So yeah, I think Spurs assets just, you know, keep on ticking over. You look at the strikers. I did bring in Bamford. And uh, I got rid of Wilson for that. And he got an assist and five points. But Bamford scored. Got the extra point. He got taken off a bit early. And then Leeds scored another goal or two. So a bit disappointed there, I guess. But very happy with Bamford. And like I said, he just gets so many chances. And from open play, uh, he's got the most goals of any player apart from Lewandowski in you know the Europe's top five leagues and of course some of you will be saying but Calvert-Lewin scored 11 no free kicks no penalties but the goals came from set pieces so that's why that's why I'm saying Bamford has scored the most from open play in the Premier League and it's very impressive nine goals and this guy just keeps on doing the business so very happy to have brought him in I got him in before his final price rise to 6.3 million um, so pretty happy with that and I'll probably be keeping him especially for the double game weeks as we discussed earlier Calvert-Lewin Another assist. This guy just keeps on producing. So uh, very happy with Calvert-Lewin. And uh, this guy, like I said, he's just so consistent. It's so hard for me to get rid of him. So very happy with Calvert-Lewin. And he's got Arsenal at home next. Um, so the fixtures are a bit mixed because of Man City at home. But Calvert-Lewin can do something in all of these games. So not too worried about him. Although as an Arsenal fan, I am worried about facing him. But that's a different story in itself. Harry Kane blanked. And to be honest, he had two great chances. I'm happy he missed them though because I wanted Liverpool to win the game. Uh, he missed one from like five yards out pretty much, a header. And then he missed a one-on-one -on -one because he was kind of dropping already. He lost his balance. And then when he got himself back up and he took the shot, it was slightly wide. And Bergwijn also had two great chances. And Spurs, I mean, I don't like the way they play, but it's efficient, you know. And Mourinho, I mean, they caught Liverpool out so many times. So it was a good tactic for the game and uh, nothing else you would expect from Mourinho and Spurs. But 
there you go. They had the chances. They didn't take them. Only Son did. And even then, that was a debatable goal. But there you go. That's my uh, game week so far. Obviously, I still have Martinez to play on top of my captain Bruno and Grealish. So hopefully some points from all three. And that could turn, you know, my 38 points into, you know, maybe 50, 60. And of course, like I said, my main regret was going from Chilwell to Diaz because Diaz is 5.6 million. Chilwell is 6.2. And for that 0.6 million difference, Chilwell adds, you know, goals and assists. I know he's only got two goals and three assists this season, but that's from like 10 games or something like that. And he's a left back, so you can't expect him to have pretty much, you know, a goal contribution per game. So it's very good for, you know, his price. And uh, yeah, because of that, what have I done? I've literally, <laughs> I've done a tenet, I've done a reverse, whatever you want to call a you know reverse. I have gone from Chilwell to Diaz, back from Diaz to Chilwell, and Chilwell's back in my team, and I lost 0 0.2 million in value, and I also lost five points for game week 13, so very, very disappointed. But if I look at my team overall, I'm very happy with it. The only problem, of course, as you can see here, is Walker Peters starting against Man City at home, and it's between him and Kufal, who faces Chelsea away for that third defensive spot. But I will say this, last season, in the exact same fixtures, I believe West Ham and Southampton kept clean sheets, so... You know, there is a possibility that they can do that again. Man City aren't looking great, if we're being honest. They're not, you know, they don't have that conviction up front. They're not taking as many chances. They're not even as creating as many. So, you know, maybe Southampton have a chance. At the moment, I do have Walker-Peters, but it is a bit of a conundrum yet again between Kufal and Walker-Peters. And this is going to be happening every single week, it seems, because if I did add, let's say, a diet for Kilman as I planned originally that would make it yet another headache to have and I'd probably be having points. You know, imagine if I benched Kufal, for example, and his eight points were on my bench. That could happen even more often when I have the likes of Dyer also in my team. Um, but very happy with my structure. And like I said, I don't want to tear it up just because of two game weeks. So that's why I'm going to be sticking to what I have. Zuma and Chilwell at home to West Ham. And David Moyes did say in his press conference that he might be rotating a lot because his players seem tired and they need a rest. He said the likes of Cresswell picked up minor injuries. So maybe Chelsea will be playing a very strong team and West Ham are going to be resting players. You never know. But Chelsea do have another big game in a few days' time against Arsenal. So you never know. Martinez has West Brom away. But to be honest, I'm a bit worried because of the manager bounce uh, from Sam Allardyce. And, uh, you know, he. this could be a very interesting game. So maybe not as simple as it seems. But uh, I haven't even seen how Aston Villa have done against Burnley first. We'll have to wait and see. And then in terms of my midfield, Fernandez, Son, Salah, Grealish, it's never, you know, they're non-negotiables. And my front three, of course, Bamford, Calvert-Lewin and Kane. Now, in terms of captaincy, of course, I do have the armband on Kane. But you know what? That's mainly because of his record against uh, Leicester. He's only blanked three times this season. And, you know, he's still in great form. I know he missed two big chances against Liverpool, but he's still in fantastic form. And then apart from that, I mean, I look across the board. I wouldn't captain Son because, like I said, Kane's record is far superior, so that rules him out of the equation. Grealish, like I said, I'm not going to captain him. Dominic Calvert-Lewin is the only one outside the premium, uh, so to speak, uh, assets that I would consider captaining, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, Bamford, same thing. So it literally limits it to Salah, Kane and Bruno. And Bruno's facing a very poor defence in Leeds, and there could be some goals there for Manchester United. But uh, at home, Man United sometimes seem lethargic. They don't have that intensity and they lack that spark, even with Bruno Fernandes. So I'm probably not going to go towards him, although he is still a good captaincy option for the week and he can still do very, very well. Salah against Palace away. It's a good fixture. Salah's in great form. Even away from home, you know, that is a bit of a myth. He's still doing well away from home. Um, but uh, I'm probably not going to captain him. So at the moment, Salah's my vice captain. Kane is going to be my captain. And in terms of my bench, Kufal's going to be first, Kilman second, Basuma third. But I don't expect Kilman to start. If he does against Burnley, that could be a great chance for a clean sheet. But I doubt he will with Sice coming back into the starting lineup and another win for Wolves. So they've, you know, done pretty well so far um, to kind of bounce back after a shaky start. and no Raul Jimenez. Uh, but that's how my team is going to be. I know it's a bit of a weird transfer to go to Chilwell yet again, but uh, I'm going to stick to it, I think. I know 6.2 million is a lot, and that's why I was actually, I got rid of him in the first place, but I look at it and I think, you know what, his attack and potential is great. And if I do want to get rid of him and save money, I could just go from him to Reese James at some point. But having two Chelsea defenders, especially with the double game week in game week 19, it's very, very crucial to have those Chelsea players. So uh, very happy with that. And uh, very happy with my team overall. And 
at the moment I have gone up to 91k in the world so another small green arrow uh, from 4k from last time and even last week it was another 4k green arrow so very very similar and hopefully more green arrows to come after today's games but it is very unlikely and uh, hoping for Fernandez, Grealish and Martinez to do well in game week 13 first before we even look at game week 14 but that's my team that's my thoughts on double game week in game week 19 and the blank game week in game week 18 I'm probably going to be using my free hit let me know what chips you're going to be using and how you're going to go about it down in the comment section below and uh, what do you think of my team which players do you think I should target? Of course, I listed all the teams that have double game weeks and uh, you should try to target some of their players, but don't go all out and just completely you know, ruin your structure just to accommodate these players. You know, there's still a lot of game weeks to go before we even reach the blank and double game week. So just remember that. And if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button and subscribe if you're new. We're trying to get to 2000 subscribers by the end of the season. And uh, a lot of progress made already, and I really appreciate it. Everyone who's joining in the live streams and uh, engaging in the discussion, everyone who's been tweeting me, everyone who's been messaging me, uh, not only on Twitter, but also on Instagram and on YouTube. Everyone who's been commenting every single time, subscribing, helping the channel grow. I really appreciate it. And hopefully, Game Week 13 ends well, and hopefully Game Week 14 does, you know, it's even better, and Arsenal win some games, but that's a lot to ask for. But thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.